Well, Heidi and the kids are gone today, so I think what we'll do is we're gonna do some prep work for the fence. But the first thing I wanna do is we need to let Wolf off. He has been on the cable over there for the last couple weeks because he's been going over to my neighbor's property over here. I got a new trainer collar for him, and so we're gonna work with him today. So let's do that first. You want off? Huh? You want off? Ready? Ready? Sit, sit, sit. Hey. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Much better, huh? You gotta stay. I'll tell you one thing, it is cold today. It was almost 60 degrees yesterday. Got down to 16 last night and it's probably in the 20s now, so I think I'm gonna get my car hearts on. That's better. Now let's see if she'll start in the cold. She's alive, but I don't know that she wants to be. projects going right now. I think what we're going to do is we're going to drive this fence line. I want to look over uh, some of the areas that we have to work on um, as far as prep work for the fence. And then I think we're going to just kind of use this day as some cleanup day and, and prep work for some of our projects. I have way too many projects going all at once right now between getting ready to fence all this. I've got to get oil fill pipe come in. Um, I've got to get some mowers that I purchased that were pretty dilapidated that I've got to work on and get those ready for this spring. Uh, just a, a number of number of things. So we're gonna look over this fence line and see if we're good to fence or areas that we need to uh, work on and uh, before we get this oil fill pipe come in. This tree right here might be one we need to take care of. I took off the uh, branches last fall, but I think this is gonna be a little too close to the fence. I think we're all right with these two here, but from what you can tell from this angle, if you can kind of see it, we're gonna have, that's our property line here and we're gonna have to drive the tractor through here to string fence line, and I think this is gonna be a little too close. Plus, I want to be able to uh, have kind of a, a section beside the fence to be able to mow down the road if we need to do any brush hogging next to the fence and, and fence clearing, so that's one tree that's gonna have to be taken out. I 
think these right here, I think they're gonna have to be trimmed out. Um, trying to think about how that fence is gonna go. I think I'm gonna need to run the tractor on the other side, unfortunately. This is beside the drive. Normally I can drive on this side. Um, but because it's an S-curve, we're going to have to have multiple um, supports around that corner. And I think it's gonna be a pain in the butt if uh, we're not able to drive on that side. So, I think these trees, that's gonna have, that cedar's gonna have to be completely trimmed. And then this one, this one here might have to be taken completely out. That one is definitely gonna have to go. That is too close to the fence. Maybe do a little bit of trimming there, but that's not too bad. I'm not planning on doing any clearing today, but I wanna see how much uh, work we have and how much time I need to set aside to take care of all this stuff. I think I'm gonna have to do some dirt work on this side of the pond before we do any uh, fencing. I didn't realize there were so many mounds. This mound over here, I think someone has taken it from the pond or taken it from the side of the pond, but that's a pretty good mound that's gonna have to be leveled out. And then over here, uh, we did some work. We were pulling rock out of this area for a patio and uh, my neighbor was pulling some out for some contract work. So this is definitely going to need to be leveled. Um, it doesn't look like it's too bad. It's not too much skid steer work, so, oh, maybe a couple hours worth, maybe less than that. And then I think if we do that dirt work there and then level this, I think we're gonna need to take this tree out. There's quite a bit amount of dirt here, but I think I'm gonna leave that alone. It's really close to the pond and maybe run the fence line right about here. So dirt work, dirt work, take that tree out and then just some small trees in there. So we're gonna run the fence line across this area. That's that mound we need to take out and then it's going to cut across somewhere in here. Um, all this was brush that got cleaned out before us, and then we've got some brush here that we did. All that I want to take care of at the same time when we have a machine out here. So that is um, a job in itself. We need to pile it all up and burn it. This has been here since the last five years that we have been here and it is taking up much needed pasture. Plus, we just wanna clean it up anyway. So about this line right here, that needs to be cleaned up. I think we're okay here. We can just move the fence out a little bit to about there. I think we're good on that. We might do a little bit of tree trimming, but I think that's okay. This is a rock that belongs to the original farmhouse that would have sat right here. They would have had a hand dug well over here in this, next to this pond, and there would have been a old farmhouse here. They had a pit silo over there. I can just imagine that old mulberry tree right there and, and kids uh, swinging from it with a rope swing. Really kind of cool, the uh, history behind all this farm. I need to determine where we are going to run the fence through here. I'm trying to keep the buffalo away from this spring. You can see down in here we have a spring that feeds into that pond. This runs all year long. Sometimes it doesn't run very fast. Um, 
like right now it's just kind of damp uh, but you can see up this way that spring comes all the way through there so this is the main water point I think this is usually wet but not always but this is always wet here so I'm trying to decide where oh, I'm rip my hat off um, trying to decide how much of that I want protected and because a lot of times what happens is when you get animals that trample the spring it will kind of plug it up if it doesn't run very um, strong and this doesn't so I'm trying to be careful of so that means I think this walnut tree is gonna have to come out and then these cedars and we'll be able to just run straight through there I think we will actually take out some of these cedars here. I was thinking we were going to move the fence over a little bit farther, but we're losing a lot of ground if we don't take this out here. So I think this one's going to need to go, this one's going to need to go, probably that walnut tree and the cedar here. I think that will give us a little bit more ground um, and we'll be able to move. I'm not sure. I'm gonna give that, that one some thought. I'm not sure if I wanna cut those out yet. Um, I don't know if it's worth it. Well, this is gonna have to be cut through here. We can't even drive through there with the truck. Yeah, looking down what would be this fence line here beside the pond, we're gonna have to take out this walnut tree, maybe that one, and trim up some of these cedars here. And then down this drive, that walnut tree is definitely gonna have to come out just to make room for the fence, but those two, I think, are gonna have to come out too. All in all, there is a lot more clearing work than I was anticipating. Last time I went through here and did some clear work, I was not thinking about how the tractor runs through here with a spinning jenny, they call it. It's basically the wire spool. You have to be either on one side of the fence, just depending upon the way the fence is constructed, uh, it can make it very difficult where you either have to cut, cut the wire, splice it. It's kind of hard to explain right now. Um, I will definitely bring you guys along when we do all the fencing and I'll explain what, what my thought process is and clearing so many trees. It feels like there's a lot of trees we gotta clear out, um, but it is actually necessity, unfortunately. So I think we have probably a good day's worth of clear work and combined with the um, dirt work up there. So I think if we give ourselves a day, I think we can line all of this pasture out and ready for fencing. So now I just got to figure out when to do it. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. I didn't think that they were going to do much to that tub, but they have taken it down a little bit. Um, probably not as much as it should be, but they're using it. It looks like they've got enough hay between here and this pile over here for the week. I don't think we'll bring any hay out to them today.
Coyote is always checking the girls to see if they're ready to breed. This summer is going to be the time that these guys will breed, hopefully, as long as their health is good, their weight is good, they will be breeding um, this summer and then calving the next spring. They don't always have a calf in their first three years, but hopefully we'll at least get half of them, if not all of them. We're hoping this might help in that situation. I'm just trying to do some experimenting with that um, protein tub to be able to make sure their health is up and they have the right protein, the right minerals, and their body condition is doing really well when it comes down to that uh, breeding season. This area right here is going to get fenced second. We want to really work on that front field first. And then this right here, I think we're basically going to use it as um, a wintering area where we will feed them hay um, and it'll just kind of be a good lot for it. That's probably somewhere around, oh, four or five acres, something like that. So as we grow the herd, I think this will be a really good area to be able to winter them. Uh, but it is fenced right now. It's not very good. It's got uh, barbed wire and then that temporary electric, which constantly is shorting out. It's even shorted out right now. I need to go through it again. Um, but they respect it really well because of that barbed wire. So we'll use this as the wintering area. We'll focus on fencing that up there here really shortly. I need to get a load of oiled field pipe. So I already got a hold of somebody for that. I just need to either get it trucked in or I need to pick that up. Just got to figure out the arrangements on that. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot going on right now. Lots and lots of projects. Fortunately, the tractor is running again. So that's up and running. So that's one project that's knocked out. Um, we're doing really good with the hay this winter. Uh, like I said, we've got um, probably about four or five, six days left worth of hay out in the field for them. We'll give them another bale this upcoming week, but we've got two, four, six, eight bales left. So we are actually sitting really nicely. So it looks like we might even have some left over. Who knows? It'll be close. He is loving his freedom. He's not so hyper when he's off his rope. He's a lot better dog when he's off his rope. It lets him get a lot of his energy out when he is uh, off his rope and just running around. I was talking to a dog trainer this last week and I might start doing some runs with him. I actually do a couple five mile runs a week and I think I'm gonna start bringing him along on some of those and they were saying that that will take out a lot of his energy. Wolf actually comes from a working line of German Shepherds. It just means that they have a lot of energy. He is really trainable, he's a really good dog, but he just has gobs of energy. And because he has so much energy, he can actually get a little rowdy uh, if he does not expel all that energy. So hopefully, um, taking him on some runs and stuff will get him to kind of calm down. That's what he's been, been really doing is just getting hyper and just wanting to go explore, which I understand, but he's exploring neighbor's properties, which is getting to be a nuisance for them. And I don't want him to do that. 